day everyone this is john scarborough it's kind of come off to be a pretty hot day out here today um sun's shining sure is pretty though we got the grass growing got a lot of our winter grasses the cool season grasses are starting to give out a little and uh, you can tell the summer grasses are starting to come on and that's kind of a transition period all on its own um something you kind of got a transition out of at least here in our part of the country um i keep on getting a lot of people talking to me about um the you know why can't i why am i not grazing certain ways and uh keep referring to greg judy and uh joe salatin a lot of those people that you know graze certain ways and um they all they're all in different parts of the country and, and they, you know and i'm in north central louisiana so everything's just a little bit different everywhere you are um so if you're if you're in my area then you might want to refer to some of my videos and if you're in their area you might want to refer to some of their videos as far as the way the grass grows and things like that but anyway i kind of wanted to show this example here um i've talked a lot about our creeks and uh the way we're grazing them the things we're trying to do and how we're trying to get our creeks to grow uh in order to support uh in order to hold the the topsoil in there and this right here is a really good example this is what i'm going for um kind of on all of my creeks okay uh so this right here, and it, you know, it takes time, it takes time and work. But this right here, you can see, now this is this is a very uh, shallow creek, okay? So, of course, your deeper creeks with more water is always going to be harder to pull this off. So it just depends. But it's kind of the same concept regardless of what you're working with, okay? So basically what we've got is a, we've got a nice even slope. A four-wheeler can pretty much cross anywhere in here. You know, some of these spots that are a little bit deeper, you couldn't. But you see how we're sloped off to the side there. We've got a nice even slope and it's supporting lots of growth all the way down through there really. Um, there's even some places it's kind of hard to tell it's a creek and it's a lot deeper than you would think. Um, and it's just a, a lot of it has to do with the, the newer ways we've been grazing. Uh, some of it's just kind of already was that way. Um, kind of what got us to thinking maybe that might be the, uh, the way to do it. And this grass right here is one of the best things that I that I have right here. Um, and I actually did some research, and I got in touch with a uh, with a good friend of mine. Um, sent her a picture of this, and she she pretty much you know pretty much I think she came up with it um, what it is. I mean, she sent me a picture of some more of it, and it looks exactly the same. Uh, it's a we're pretty sure it's a type of sage grass is what it is. Um, but it, it, you know, whatever the case may be, I mean, it, if I wanted to get some more seed and seed it down through here, I could. But the whole point of this, um, the whole point that I'm trying to make with this sage grass is not so much about planting it as much as it is that this grass never really grew that well until we started grazing the way we're doing, okay? And so what my point is, is the grass is coming in by itself. We're not having to do anything. We're not having to plant anything okay it's coming in by itself and look at that clump down there it's just holding itself in there okay and these walls of these the, these banks right here are just covered in um in that sage grass and you can see here the the seed head and everything uh it's really a pretty grass but what i love about it is not only does it love to grow in wet areas uh in your creek bottoms and stuff and holds your ground together it grows excellent in the shade too it does not seem to require a lot of sun at all um, but also the cattle love it okay uh, now you do your own research you, I don't know if there's any toxicity to it or anything like that all I know is I have not had any trouble out of it at all um, and I gotta say I it did a lot for carrying my cattle through the winter um, they ate a lot of this stuff okay and what I'm so excited about is the fact that I'm not seeding anything I'm not planting anything okay this is all coming in on its own and now it's coming to seed and so that means i'm going to get more of it okay so this is a grass that's it, it seems to be um uh it lasts all year round okay it stays green all year round it grows all year round um it, and the cattle love it it seems to carry them right through uh keeps fat on them okay it does seem to, I think what the key is, is it takes a little bit of a longer recovery period. So the way we've been grazing, we've been given all of our pastures 
longer recovery periods, okay? Uh, and that's giving us the ability to have this grass, okay? So, so far what it's doing for us is giving us the, uh, giving us support to our creeks. So it helps hold our creeks in. Uh, our places that are real wet and nasty, it would just end up being land that you can't even graze or do anything with. It's turning into good grazable land and giving us forage throughout the winter, okay? So it's a wonderful thing, but it's all coming in complements of giving your ground the rest, okay? And so I, I think I've, I've led some people to some confusion. Uh, I've had a lot of comments. People are uh, giving me suggestions about how to seed it and things like that. And I really appreciate all the suggestions and the support. Um, but I think what the point that I've been trying to drive home here is, is that it, the grass is coming on its own. The forage is coming on its own. The land is recovering on its own. It's just simply the giving it the time to recover, okay? So that's kind of the message I was trying to drive home a little bit. Uh, it's working out very well and I'm very excited about it. So thanks everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this content.